The University of Warwick is a founding partner of the Alan Turing Institute for Data Science. Recently, senior members of the Institute have visited the University to discuss our research and collaborative projects. My name is Alex Buxton, I'm Research Communications Manager here at Warwick, and in this interview we're talking to Sir Alan Wilson about the future of data science in the UK. I'm Alan Wilson. My uh, main job at the moment is to be uh, Chief Executive of the Alan Turing Institute. New institute, um, to all intents and purposes, a startup, but we've taken off at a uh, great rate. But anyway, come back maybe to some of that. In terms of my background, um, I've always been a researcher, I've always managed to do research, whatever else I've been doing. So I work on cities, I'm a mathematician by origin work on mathematical models, computer models of cities that can be used in town planning, various commercial uses. Um, but I've been moved out every now and again into what have become quite serious uh, management jobs. So I've been a university vice-chancellor. I had the wonderful title of Director General for Higher Education in the Department for Education a few years ago. And, um, and then I went back to being a proper researcher until suddenly I've got another big job, which is to be Chief Executive of the Alan Turing Institute. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And um, I was wondering, could you tell us a bit about um, what part data science uh, may play in the future of the UK? Well, I think, I think the starting point on this is to say, you know, the UK economy in its broadest Terms. So I include public sector, big organisations like the NHS, as well as industry and all the service sectors. There isn't a sector you can look at um, that is not now saying we have all sorts of new sources of data, uh, we have all the methods of artificial intelligence that will enable us to offer a better service, uh, be more profitable, different kinds of objectives. And... Um, you know, it, 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 and it's become a dominant theme. And, you know, you find something in the newspapers almost every day on it. Um, now, having said that, um, to start with, um, you know, different industries are transforming at different rates. And I think what data science has to do is to make sure that in this kind of age, um, the research base is there for the country to help the economy and service provision to move forward as best it can. Um, and so there will be transformation. And essentially it's all on the back of huge new sources of data and massive new computing power. And if you put the two together and combine it with the ideas of artificial intelligence and machine learning and so on, it will be transformational. We, 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 we have uh, bags that we give out to people that says data science will change the world. And, uh, Very exciting uh, possibilities. It will, it will, yeah. What do you think data science's role will be as a uh, part of the modern industrial strategy for Great Britain? It, it, it follows on, actually, from, from what I've just said, that, um, I mean, the government's industrial strategy, you know, the formal industrial strategy that the government is promoting, um, has 10 pillars. I mean, we would say, you know, data science has um, a, a role in all of them. But, um, you know, there are, I mean, what, what, what's happening now is the, there's, there's an industrial strategy challenge fund, and there's also, they're looking at sectors. Um, and for instance, there will be an AI um, sector that's identified as part of the industrial strategy. And so um, it will make a huge difference. And from a Turing Institute point of view, you know, we want to play our role in that. Um, so we're very close to the people who are developing the industrial strategy to, as it were, offer our services to help them along. And how will you ensure that the Turing becomes firmly embedded and generally seen by the whole academic community as the National Institute for Data Science? Well, in, in, in fact, one of the ways to look at the Institute is um, uh, we, we have, there were five founding universities, so we, we have five university partners, um, and that is a start. 
we have a number of strategic partners on the industrial side and the public sector side that are providing funding. So you can actually see the Turing Institute has been the hub at the centre of two networks that we have to make interact. We've got the academic and essentially the research network on the one hand and the applications network on the other hand. Now that's the background. The core of your question is how, how do we then make sure that uh, the institute itself is properly embedded um, in the academic community, and particularly I think the research community. And um, you know, we will work in partnership with our universities. We found good ways of doing that. The fact that I'm in Warwick today talking to you know, some very good audiences and some serious researchers um, is an example of that. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing to say is, um, uh, you know, as implied by your question, you know, we, we have, have to be and will be a national institute. And that means we have to move beyond just engaging with five universities. And in various ways, we already do that. Um, but we're actually just in the process of developing more formal schemes to, um, to, to, to help with um, the, the, the role that the institute should have as a, as a as, as a national institute. What's actually happening, and there's one thing I should throw in here, we're, we're, you know, part of the mechanism for engaging with the academic community is with our partner universities nominating Turing fellows um, to work with us. And we find the ones that are working with us are now developing projects across universities, so it's not just within their own universities, it's probably within, with two or three other universities. And... Um, so I think you know that's part of the embedding. It's part of the national embedding that um, yeah we can be a kind of catalyst for bringing these things together. Um, and what challenges and opportunities do you see ahead in the field of data science? Well, I think um, I mean the, it, it, it's probably worth dividing it into roughly speaking methods and applications. Let me put it that way and. Um, a lot of the research community in data science are working on methods in statistics, mathematical modelling, machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, and, and, and so on. Um, huge demand is already implied you know, in industry, public sector, um, for these methods. So the opportunity to that, there is absolutely no question about that. The, the big challenges are about actually bringing um, you know, for, and for the institute at times, it's almost acting as a broker. You know that we actually bring people with their own data challenges together with researchers, many of whom are not actually used to doing applied work, but will enjoy it once they get a new kind of challenge um, together. Um, you know, to make progress. And how are Warwick and the Turing tackling these challenges together? Well, one of, one of the nice things to say about being here, and I'm not saying that just because we're here, uh, is we have a very good working relationship with Warwick. Um, it's very friendly, very cooperative. Um, and, um, you know, researchers in Warwick has been demonstrated to me in various meetings today, are very enthusiastic about um, working with the Institute, working with us, helping us to define our research strategy to meet these challenges. So, just all I want to say about that is it's very good. And uh, we've recently named seven new Turing Fellows here at Warwick. Um, and they're all from increasingly interdisciplinary backgrounds. What kind of opportunities do you think this presents? Well, I think, I think it presents every opportunity. In fact, I'll turn that argument around a bit. Um, it will, in, in some ways, it sounds very distinctive because universities... Um, still have departments and departments are quite important um, and I have to say and I'm, you know, I'll sound as though I'm preaching on this when the, the world and its challenges are essentially interdisciplinary and um, so the fact that um, Turing fellows from Warwick are coming from interdisciplinary backgrounds is um, from my point of view is exactly as it should be there is an old joke, I'm not sure I should really say this here, but uh, in a university that I've heard from the industry side, uh, you know, the industry has problems and universities have departments. 
And you know, what universities have to learn to do is to put interdisciplinary teams together to work on problems in industry and the public sector. And, um, and that's what we're doing with colleagues in Warwick. And so it's not surprising, actually, that people are coming to us with these backgrounds. And you mentioned at the start of the interview uh, your own um, background. What was it that took you from theoretical physics to the mathematical modelling of cities? And, and was there a, a common theme or link well, there? Well, it's, it, it's an interesting story. You could actually get me talking for quite a long time about that. <laughs> but um, I, I was brought up in mathematics and to an extent theoretical physics. And I was actually working in the Rutherford Lab at Harwell um, in elementary particle physics. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It taught me a huge amount. It was the early days of big computing, um, and in a sense, big data, funny enough, looking back. Um, and um, I was enjoying it, um, but it was an incredibly competitive field, and in fact, it still is. Um, and, you know, with the enthusiasm of youth um, and some appropriate idealism, which I hope I've still got. Um, I actually decided I wanted to work in a field that would be socially useful um, and um, in a more direct sense. And so I started looking around um, and finished up working on, um, initially on transport problems in cities. Um, and funnily enough, what actually, what actually made my academic career, you asked me if there was anything in common, uh, what made my academic career was um, because I knew <coughs> certain aspects of physics very well, um, I could pin some mathematics out of physics, which actually solved the problem of how to predict transport flows in cities. And um, it was suddenly picked up and used everywhere. And it's still used. So, I mean, I've been very lucky as a researcher that some, something I invented a very long time ago is actually still in use. Um, so, there was a common theme, but of course, I've I uh, very quickly um, stopped being a physicist and finished up actually as a professor of geography. So if I have a discipline, technically I'm a geographer. But, uh, but I'm really into discipline when it goes back to our previous, previous question. Fantastic. Um, and what skills do you think are most valuable to those working in the field of data science today? Well, we talked about interdisciplinarity and um, that must be a crucial part of that. Um, I think what we've got to avoid, I mean, this, this does say something about the skills. Um, we have to avoid the syndrome of, you know, big data and some of the aspects of data science being a solution looking for a problem. And there's a bit of that around. Whereas in terms of skills and focus, um, while we need all the methodological skills, we need people who are actually capable of identifying you know, the big challenges in various applied domains and then actually focusing their data science on these challenges. And um, I, I think that's where the big breakthroughs will come. And what advice would you give to researchers and students who are interested in working in the field of data science? Well, I think, I think the first thing to say is um, it's very fashionable and, you know, there are always dangers in following fashion, but um, it won't go away, you know, because as I was saying earlier, what's actually driven the opportunity in data science is the growth of data from a very wide variety of sources uh, and the corresponding growth of computing power and then to an extent the skills that go with data science like machine learning. And, um, you know, the, those will be invaluable as skills. Um, so in attracting people into the field, um, I mean, the first thing you say is, is, is it's a field in which you, you actually be very well paid. So, you know, it can be win-win um, because it's a, it's a field where you will be in demand. Um, but above all, if I was to give people advice, I would say, you know, the first thing, first thing you always have to do is to make sure you're working on interested problems. Um, in fact, there's a bit of advice I sometimes give to um, budding PhD students. Um, 
I said that what I'm about to say, the concepts are wholly subjective, but when you choose your topic within data science, we do it that way. So it has to have two properties. It has to be interesting and it has to be important. I said it has to be interesting to you because otherwise you'll be fed up with it before very long. But it has to be important to somebody else. And uh, if you give yourself that challenge, you'll come up with interesting It's good advice. Project. And um, finally, what makes the Turing partnership with the University of Warwick special? I think, I mean, I think in a sense, it's a very, very, very simple answer to that. Um, we, 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 we have a, a very good liaison director with Greg Commode, and uh, he facilitates the interaction uh, be, be, between Warwick researchers and the Institute and in uh, you know, various applied science partners. Um, and um, I, th I think, I mean, what I've learned is that there are probably two things at least, and there will be more, about Warwick which make it very important for us and therefore the relationship special. Um, one is the quality of the research and one has been what's becoming the proven commitment that Warwick Research is wanting to work with the Institute. And you need both things. You know, it's no good having the skills if people don't want to work with you, but we've actually, you know, we've, between us, managed to create an environment where people really want to work together um, and indeed to work across other universities as well. Um, so we've got some fantastic projects going and um, we'll have a lot more. Sir Alan Wilson, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for listening, and for more information on the University of Warwick and the Turing Partnership, visit warwick.ac.uk forward slash research forward slash Turing.